All right, so kind of a historic day. Google has released their Music LM model to the public. This is actually the one that came from that uh, paper that they released back in, I think, late January, where you couldn't use it yourself, but they sort of told us what their model was doing, how essentially it could potentially create music from text prompts and whistling prompts and singing prompts. And so now it's been made available. There is a waiting list. So I basically signed up for it even just earlier today before I'm recording this video. Um, it only took a couple of hours before I was able to get access to it. So I'm actually, I've never used it. This is the first time you guys are gonna watch me use it live here. Well, not live, but I'm recording a video. Uh, I wanna go through this with you guys, kind of just give you my first initial reactions, what I'm thinking about this technology. But before we get into it, I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments on this video and I want to just remind everybody that I'm aware that this music is probably not gonna be that good. <laughs> and I'm gonna be, I'm, cause I've already heard of what it can do before. I don't imagine they've made massive leaps already in a couple of months. So I am aware and I share the opinion that the music we're gonna hear here probably won't be amazing or great or licensable or competitive with us, okay? But that's not probably the best take to take on what we're gonna hear here. I think the smarter take and the smarter interpretation or the frame that we should be putting on this as we listen through this and go through this together is what can it do decently? Where do we see it potentially getting better in the future? And what does that mean for us in terms of this becoming something that can potentially you know, compete with us and start taking some of our work from us? Because that's certainly the reality that we have to all be realistic about and face. And I understand I'm kind of the messenger on it. And a lot of people want to shoot me for just saying that I didn't make AI. I didn't invent it. I'm just letting you guys know this is what's out there. This is what's coming. This is now being released, obviously, as a sort of prototype beta thing by Google. Um, but anyway, so as I go through these music examples, I want us all to kind of, and that's what my frame is going to be on. What is it doing well? What is it not doing so well? Because I definitely want to help all of us AI proof our music moving forward. And that's really what I'm going to be focusing on with my channel here and in Sync Academy for the rest of the year. So before we get started, it has this little thing that says, you know, make a good prompt, be very descriptive. Uh, electronic or classical instrument sounds best. Um, okay, so classical instruments are saying sound best. Okay. Uh, mention the vibe, mood, or emotion you want to create. Certain queries that mention specific artists or include vocals will not be generated. Interesting. Because <laughs> I was actually going to try that and say, uh, make me a Nirvana sounding, you know, uh, grunge rock track. And I guess that's not going to work. So that's interesting to know. Uh, improve the model by giving out trophies. Now, here's a really important thing, because this is definitely where I see AI models getting better, not for the short, not in the short run, but in a couple of years. Essentially, what they're going to be asking for is all of us to be telling it, every user, what was good. So if you prompt it, it gives you something that you like, you give it a thumbs up. And right here, it's saying basically give it a trophy. Uh, the feedback will improve music LM for everyone. So that's essentially the, the crucial part of all these models is it's going to just spit out whatever it thinks you might want. And it really depends on the user saying, yep, that was exactly what I was looking for or way, I was way off. I don't want anything like that because it's basically going to then take that data, that little point of information and feed it back through the system. So the next time somebody asks for that or maybe you ask for that type of music, it will not spit out the same thing. It'll try to go in a new direction until it finds kind of what you like, right? So sort of the thumbs up, thumbs down in Pandora. If you guys ever use the Pandora radio station, I think that's pretty much what it is. And then at the bottom here, um, it says you can save your creations. If you want to save your tracks, click the more icon to download. So I I guess you can download this in some way. I don't know if it's going to be a WAV file or MP3 or what, but let's have at it. My first prompt with Music LM, what should I do? Well, uh, I'm going to go back to my roots. Um, I grew up listening to punk music, punk rock music. So I'm going to say pop punk uh, track with happy vibe. Pretty generic in general. Let's see what it does. Looks like it's generating here on the right side of the screen. Well, before we go to that second one, that was actually better than I was expecting. Um, from the you know white paper we heard in January, I wasn't hearing music. 
I'm not saying that's great. Again, very, very aware that that was very low uh, sample rate. Um, it also felt hollow. Like the, the guitars were kind of a ghost in the track. They weren't really there present, but there was sort of this idea of a guitar, the sort of guitar in there. But the drums and the vibe of the drums felt like I was wanting to dance along to that. So like I definitely captured that kind of pop punk danceable uh, feeling to it. Of course, the quality of the samples and, and the instruments definitely weren't there. Um, and it didn't have that sort of presence of a pop punk track. But um that definitely is an improvement, at least on this one example, from what we were hearing a few months ago from what they did. So they've definitely uh, been doing some work here. I just want to see what's the second track all about. Now that's interesting. There's vocals in there. Okay. I don't know. See, this is the big question and I'm, I'm really curious and hopefully maybe I can get somebody at Google to do an interview with me, but where are they getting the music that fed this model? Right. That to me sounds like a very, maybe some 41 simple plan, good Charlotte type of a track. And maybe they didn't use any of those artists, right? Maybe they really only went with public domain, copyright free, or just voluntarily, you know, getting all their buddies with bands and music to throw it into this model. I don't know, but that really sounded very commercial. <laughs> that sounded very much, it, it was sort of like mimicking um, the kind of feel and the style of the vocals, even though the vocalists, it's, it's a weird thing to describe. It's like, they're not really in the track, like guitars and vocals aren't in the track but their essence is like something in there, whatever these sounds are that they're creating, it's like, oh yeah, that's the sort of the vibe of what we were really looking for with that style of music. So that's kind of interesting. Now, I'm, again, I'm just curious where they're getting that stuff. Let's go to a completely different direction. I really wanna go with the EDM direction because that's really one of those things I think uh, AI models will probably be able to do fairly well. So let's just go ahead and type in um, uh, modern EDM with let's see energetic um melodic theme see what it does with that That's really interesting. If you guys were listening to that one, it made a strange musical choice three fourths into it with a key change and going into some weird, strange, interesting direction. So I think that's where these models are. I find them really interesting. Um, obviously, not licensable, almost like not listenable either because it's like it's so jarring. But what I find is kind of like when we were learning how to make music, we were making choices like that. Like I remember when I was first making music, it was like, let's just completely throw something out and let's go into a completely different track or a different song or a different vibe or a different key or whatever. And you kind of don't really know what works or doesn't work until you start like just stabbing out there and seeing what works. So it sounds like these models are kind of trying to do that where it's taking the sort of the keywords that you're putting into it, it's doing its best but it does feel like it's trying to maybe merge a bunch of different types of music together or just, you know, I guess metadata, you know, it's key tags or words. And sometimes it comes up with these really weird creative choices, which I think in some ways could be cool for some of these models. They might make some interesting music, but in some ways it's going to just be like, oh, what the hell was that? I don't want to hear that ever again. Let's see what it did on the second one. Okay, so that one I think changed tempo, maybe changed key as well. Um, <laughs> really was going in its own direction. So that one um, is very creative. Let's just call that one a, an extremely creative um, uh, interpretation of what I was asking for. Uh, it's not really the style I was looking for though. That really feels more like kind of trancey sort of EDM and that's not really what I wanted. I think maybe what I should do is do pop EDM. Maybe I should do actually Modern pop EDM with bubbly vibe and happy 
lyrics. I wonder if it'll actually throw in some sort of a vocalist. Let's see what it does with that. So that one definitely was more what I was kind of looking for was a little bit more uh, catchy, you know, something that can be danceable and a little bit catchy. So again, you know, it even had some interesting transitions there. That was one thing I noticed is it definitely had a sort of, you know, it was building up, um, not necessarily building, but it had a chorus and then it came down in intensity and then it was sort of building itself back up. So that's kind of interesting that it has the ability to create these kind of different, you um, um, I guess dynamics within its own creation here. So let's see what they did on the uh, second one. Here. So that's interesting. It's again, it's like, it almost sounds like if you had vocals on your track, and then you had like the sort of um, reverb or echo bus enabled, but you muted the main vocals. That's what it sounds like. It's like there's a, there's an effect of vocals on the track, but not the actual vocals themselves. So that's a really interesting artifact of whatever it's doing. So I'm wondering how it's doing that. I'm just curious, what does it say you can download as and what does it give you? So it gives you an MP3 actually. I'm looking right down here, you guys can't see it, but it does just give you an immediate MP3 that you can essentially play back. So. That's interesting. Um, let's go to maybe some more orchestral stuff. Let's see how it does with that. And now it says it won't do something if you ask for a specific artist, but I, I wanna just try that. I wanna see if it's gonna just give me an error. Um, orchestral cue in the style of Hans Zimmer. See if it actually does it. Can't generate audio for that. It did give me an error, okay. Orchestral cue. cue um, that is intense, dramatic, and feels edgy. Not even sure what I'm looking for here, but let's see what it interprets that as. Okay, that's a fail. <laughs> that's just a fail. There's really, there's not even, I don't think that was music. I don't know what that was I just listened to. Let's check out number two. Okay, it, it really fell apart at the end there. But the beginning, you guys heard what it could do at the beginning. It had that sort of tribal, dun, 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 that kind of like galloping drum feel. You definitely kind of felt that sort of Hans Zimmer intense chase scene kind of vibe going on there. So there's that, okay? So it definitely is able to kind of tap into, I guess, a little bit of what I was looking for, which I didn't even really imagine that um, when I actually typed that in. But it's kind of interesting that it was able to uh, pull that up. So that's kind of cool. Let's try something really simple. Let's go... Um, Romantic solo piano with lots of reverb. So, because I'm curious if a lot of these models can basically maybe generate single instrument pieces of music fairly well, as opposed to the complexity of stacking up all these different instruments and trying to create something cohesive that way. Let's see what it can do asking for just something with piano. It's interesting because it has such a lo-fi quality to it that almost felt like it was sort of a, a you know a 1920s recording right didn't it kind of get that feel like it was almost like you were listening to a real person playing but just on a really lo-fi recording piece of equipment so 
that's something that's probably licensable right now. Uh, solo piano uh, in that style and the way that it was performing there. For me, I mean, I'm not a pianist. Maybe some of you guys are. That that could have fooled me. I mean, I don't know if I would have known. You know, if you told me, if you if you presented that to me, and let's be honest here, if, if that had been presented to us and we didn't know this is from Music LM from Google's project, but we were just told, here's a piece of music, what do you think? Would you guess that it was an AI piece of generated music that's just at a low sample rate? Or would you think that was a human composer recorded just on some ancient technology? I would think the latter. So that to me is kind of an interesting sort of step up that it's able to do something like that that can be uh, believable at the lower quality. But let's see what it does on the uh, second track here. So very similar, kind of the same sort of vibe it's got going on there. I want to even like, I don't want something so busy that I almost want to be like, um, uh, simple piano music that is slow, dreamy, and spacious. I don't want something so busy and so intense. I kind of want to have something more uh, melodic, relaxed. So that's, that's kind of what I was thinking in terms of where these models are going to be first rearing their heads because I actually use a video editing software called Film, Filmora and they actually already inside of their production suite inside of the actual app where you're editing your videos, it has a tab where you can get music and then it has a sub tab that says AI music and I clicked on that the other day just to see what they had. And a lot of it was this. It was single solo piano music. And it didn't sound actually as decent as that. That actually sounded pretty good, um, very pleasing to the ear. Um, some of the stuff that's there, it feels very stiff and robotic, and it just didn't feel like it was something I'd want to hear. But I think single instruments will be the first place that AI models can definitely come in and create some competition for us in all of these areas in terms of you know stock licensing sites royalty free sites and production music libraries so this is one of these sort of changes and strategies that i think we need to embrace is you know the days of putting together solo instrument tracks probably need to come to an end for us because this is where this technology is today it's of course at a lower sample rate but it's just a matter of time i believe um and i don't think it's going to be that much longer before this sample rate gets higher and then it'll have to be able to create amazing beautiful pieces of piano music like this that stays in the same key i mean i think that last one was consistent it felt like it was well composed it was staying in the same key it even had some dynamics it didn't feel like it was just like a stiff robot playing it um so that was actually a pretty impressive one let's take out or let's listen to number two It's even throwing in some like a, a keyboard, not keyboards, um, some strings or something in the background there. So it's actually adding an accompaniment that I didn't ask for, which was kind of interesting. Um, I want to just change out piano, guitar. I'm curious if it can do a simple single guitar, or if it can or cannot, or how well it does with that. So I realize I need to put solo instead of music because I think when I'm putting music, it's thinking a full track. That's what that uh, text word means to me. So that still is giving me music behind it. Maybe I have to do single guitar maybe just one i'm not sure how exactly what i should prompt to say don't give me anything else just a guitar Yeah, 
yeah, so it's still giving me the music. That one didn't even sound that bad, though. All right, well, let's just finish off this first video with um, grunge rock with uh, intense vibe and rambunctious. Did I spell that right? Rambunctious energy. See if I can get if it can get me Nirvana without asking for Nirvana. Let's see if it does it. Kinda. It's kinda there. Let's see what the second one does. created a fade out okay so i guess some tracks they just decided to give a fade out so that's where i'll leave this one this is interesting um again i don't know exactly what to make of this yet i don't know exactly where we need to go with this but i definitely am going to play with this for a long time uh you guys can definitely sign up if you just type in google search music lm uh, there's a wait list you guys can go check it out it, i mean i got access within a couple of hours i can't imagine it'll take you guys much longer if you want to um, but I'm going to just play with this. And as I said about a month ago, when I started talking about AI music on my channel, it's just about being curious and open right now. Okay. We don't have to make any decisions and it's too early to say, oh my God, it's all over. It's hopeless. And why even keep going? I mean, I think it's way, 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 way too early to start worrying about that kind of a thing. But I do want to be somebody that doesn't get completely blindsided by this technology because I either dismiss it, like I know that some people will watch this video and go, that music was garbage. AI music ain't ever going to do anything to us. I think that's foolish. I really don't think that that is the wise move here. I think the wise move is to say, okay, this is where we are now. This is where the quality of music is. It's not quite great. There are definitely some problems. But you guys saw here in this short video, it can do some things not so bad, right? It can do some things that are pretty good, of course, with the sample rate all the way up to maybe at least, you know, 44K. Now, now you got something there that could certainly be useful for somebody else. So what we need to do and what I'm going to be doing basically now um, in the coming days and weeks is really do a deep dive into this stuff and sort of come up with what I'm going to show, uh, what I'm going to call a sort of AI proof checklist right because i really want to know what can these models do well what can they not do well what does it seem like they're struggling with what does it seem like they're excelling with and wherever the struggles are we need to fill those gaps and whatever it's doing well at we better be able to do that even better than it's able to do okay so this is one of these moments in our industry where we can choose it's like a fork in the road right we can decide to bury our heads whatever i'm just going to keep doing what i'm doing or give up which you know i think is you know, definitely not advisable. Or we just sort of accept this is the conversation we have to have. This is the new reality that's been presented to us. We didn't choose this. We didn't make this. It's just showing up here in our lives. So what can we do about it? Well, we can be open, curious about it, and we can decide, hey, let's start making a couple of changes to ensure that we stay ahead of where this technology is. And there's going to be some iterations of AI that we will definitely be able to use to certainly stay ahead and augment our creativity and outsource some of the boring stuff that we really don't like doing or maybe we're not that good at. So I'm still obviously very optimistic about this, but we also need to be realistic that with every technological revolution that we go through, jobs are lost, industries are destroyed, uh, the way of life completely changes. I think we are certainly going to see that for this AI uh, revolution that we are in. So let's definitely keep our eyes open. Let's keep that curiosity, that optimism, that openness to it. But let's definitely keep our eyes on what's going on here so that we stay ahead of this stuff.